It's, it's, it's too much progression, Rachel. It's too much progress <laughs> being made. I'm kidding. Uh, we're going to cash in on my fame doing the weather right now, though. Here's what we're tracking on Doppler radar. We're tracking just light rain, some drizzle near Columbus. This is sort of a system that I've been tracking all morning long. It's really just has fallen apart, so we're tracking just light rain off the international border. That storm system is really just uh, already fizzled out. We're staying dry for Las Cruces, El Paso, but we're also tracking a couple of thunderstorms out in other portions of West Texas near San Angelo, the Midland area, off I-20 and Abilene. So if you do have any travel plans, if you're trying to head out uh, east uh, for the holiday weekend, just keep that in mind. You could encounter some flooding in certain locations, especially of I-10 and I-20, as we will remain um, seeing these thunderstorms begin to develop across other portions of Texas because we're just getting recycled air um, of some moisture from the Gulf of Mexico being pushed in. Uh, pretty impressive amounts, though, over the past 24 hours when it came to rain accumulation, close to an inch out in Cloudcroft, uh, close to half an inch for Guadalupe Pass. Uh, trace amounts for the El Paso area. We did see a storm cell develop yesterday afternoon, but it really fizzled out uh, extremely quickly. It was short-lived, uh, and we haven't really picked up anything at the airport in Las Cruces in the past 24 hours, but that could change later on this afternoon. So it is going to be humid. It is going to be muggy. Our future track computer model indicating that we will see um, some more clouds start to um, funnel into the area across Las Cruces. A little more sunshine out east in Horizon City in Fabens and Tornillo. Around this afternoon, we could see some isolated storms begin to develop across the area, but not a whole lot of widespread showers and thunderstorms that we saw uh, um, earlier in the week. So that's why we dropped that ABC7 first alert. But if anything changes, of course, we'll let you know with our uh, evening uh, forecaster, Katie Frazier, our meteorologist, this evening. But 9 p.m., it looks like this. Uh, as of right now, a couple isolated storms could develop, maybe some overnight showers lingering through the area. Tomorrow, 4th of July, looks like this. It'll be hit and miss storms again. So keep the umbrella handy, keep the rain jacket handy, and things will again fizzle out. We'll see some isolated thunderstorms develop across the overnight hours making for maybe a wet commute along certain portions of El Paso County by the time we hit Monday morning. Now, when it comes to rain accumulation, we could be adding a lot more drops to our annual bucket as we run this model all the way through Monday evening. You can see maybe we could pick up uh, close to half of an inch for both Las Cruces and a little more than half an inch for El Paso by the time the holiday weekend ro uh, finishes. And some area locations could pick up around a quarter of an inch in Van Horn and Sierra Blanca. So far, it is the third day of July, and we've picked up close to an inch of rain, which is pretty impressive. So right now we sit about four inches for, the, for this entire year. Last year, our monsoon season only picked up around two inches of rain. So we're already doing better numbers than we did last year. But if you do have plans this evening, let's say you're in Las Cruces for the electric light parade, keep the rain jacket handy. We could see uh, a stray shower. So as we just showed you in Future Track Computer Model, and temperatures will be in the 70s. But if you do plan on heading to the Locomotives game, I know they're having some fireworks out there. Yeah, I know. Isn't he, isn't he cool? I love him. All right, anyways, <laughs> yeah, so this is what we're forecasting. If you're heading out to the game, guys, you do have a slight chance to see a uh, shower, a thunderstorm develop across the area. Temperatures will be in the 80s, but there will be some fireworks after the game, so go support the locomotives. We'll see temperatures in the 90s uh, for the remainder of the first half of the next seven days, but we'll begin to dry things out by Thursday and Friday.